Hello everyone, my name is Chelsea and I study a fruit called aguaje in the Peruvian Amazon. Thank you all for being here to watch my video. I'm currently in Peru and I'm glad to have the opportunity to talk to you all about my research. For today's talk, I'm going to give you a bit of background about the ecology of the species and its fruit market, and then go into conservation issues and my research objectives. I'm just in the beginning part of my research, so I'll be sharing my proposed research plan with you all today. Aguaje is a palm tree that grows throughout the Amazon rainforest, which is one single forest that is about the size of the entire lower 48 United States. Within the Amazon rainforest, aguaje forms dense stands that can be hundreds of acres in size. The fruit from these palms are small, red, and about the size of a lemon, and each individual tree can produce several hundred to several thousand fruit each year. Because there are a lot of these trees and each tree produces a lot of fruit, the fruit is a very important food source for many species. In order to study which species depend on this fruit, one of my colleagues has camera traps in the forest that take pictures of animals that come and eat the fruit. And I have a few of the pictures here to share with you. This first one is a Kwati Mundi, which is an animal in the raccoon family. These are peccary, which are a type of wild pig. And these are red wakari monkeys, which are a species only found in a few places in Peru. In addition to being an important source of food for animals, aguaje is also harvested to be sold in the city of Iquitos, which has a population of about half a million people. Harvesters bring sacks of aguaje to the city, which each weigh about 75 pounds. These sacks are then purchased by wholesalers who divide the fruit according to quality. Street vendors then purchase the fruit from the wholesalers to be sold on the streets as whole fruit or to be processed into juice, mash, or an ice cream. The harvest and market for this fruit employs several thousand people in the Peruvian Amazon, many of whom have less than an elementary school education and limited opportunities for employment. Okay, so far I've given you all a lot of background information about aguaje, but you might be asking yourself why I'm interested in studying this species. Well, there's an interesting conservation situation that has two parts. The first is that a lot of aguaje is coming into the city of Iquitos. Every day, hundreds to thousands of these sacks of aguaje enter the city, and all of them come from trees that were harvested in the wild. The second issue is that the trees are cut to harvest the fruit. It takes about 10 years for this tree to grow from a seed to the point where it starts producing fruit. So as you can imagine, cutting down a tree can be very damaging to both the animals that depend on the fruit for food and for the people who depend on the fruit for income. But cutting is not the only way to harvest the fruit. There are also climbing methods available, some of which, like the one pictured here, have been developed by local harvesters who wanted a more sustainable harvest method. Although these other methods are available, the majority of the fruit is still harvested by cutting. So given this situation, where we have a lot of fruit being harvested unsustainably, I've come up with three research objectives for my dissertation. The first objective of my work is to map the change in distribution of this species over time. These pictures are an example of deforestation in Brazil. Um, they're actually straight off of Google Earth, which has a timeline feature. So this is something you can do at home. I'm planning on using satellite data to track change in distribution over time. My second objective is to understand the decisions made by people in the fruit market and what options they have in terms of gaining income and using different harvest methods. I will be interviewing people all along the market chain to get a full picture of the needs and perspectives of people who depend on this plant for their livelihoods. My last objective is to use the information from my maps and market analysis to develop management options for this resource. My hope is that we can bring in people from all along the market chain to participate in planning workshops so that together we can create a regional management plan that people understand, have confidence in, and are willing to implement. 
My ultimate goal at the end of my research is that all stakeholders are working together to manage the species sustainably. The last thing I want to leave you all with is that conservation and natural resource management is not just about the plants and animals that are out in nature. It's about the people who work and live and depend on those resources for their livelihoods. Thank you for taking the time to come and watch my video. If you'd like to read more about my research or contact me with any questions, please feel free to visit my research blog. Uh, the address is here on the screen and it is cromulo.wordpress.com. Thank you.